Okay, so now we have management history uh, part two, we'll call it. Uh, we're simplifying things uh, and keeping it basic, but here we come up with, uh, now remember we had Frederick Taylor, uh, the one best way, people are machines, uh, basically. Uh, and then we had Max Weber, hierarchies, uh, impersonality, and things like that. So along comes Hugo Munsterberg, an industrial psychology uh, person who came up with these uh, three steps uh, for managing people. So he said to, uh oh, here comes Taylor again. Study jobs and determine who is the best at the job. So we're gonna, here again, we're gonna have job fit. We're going to study the jobs and find somebody who would be best at the job. If it's a lot of physical work, we need somebody strong. Uh, if it, I don't know, uh, needs to be something quick, find somebody who's quick. So we do that. Now we study the psychological conditions under which employees do their best work. Wow, who would have thought of that? See, Taylor didn't care about that and Max Weber didn't care about that. But here we are beginning to see the human side come into play. Identify the psychological conditions under which employees do their best work. Uh, for starters, uh, they, maybe they like to have fun. Uh, maybe they like challenges, things that are kind of complicated in a way. Uh, maybe they like working in groups, working in teams. We look at that. And then, I, li I, like, I like Hugo, uh, devise management strategies to influence employees to follow management's interests. Let me see. Devise management strategies to influence employees. You can look at this as negative or positive. I'm looking at it as positive. Because uh, if we changed influence to manipulate, that would be one thing. Devise management strategies to influence employees to follow management's interest. Now, uh, when you look at Weber and you look at Taylor, is there any leadership there? Well, yeah, the, the one best way manager knows the best way to do things and he's gonna lead his or her people uh, the, do the right, the best they can. Um, but here uh, we have devised management strategies to influence employees to follow management's interests. And that translates to me into leadership. We want to figure out how to get people on board. So we have followers. And if we have followers, then we have a leader. So I kind of like this. This is uh, more humanistic and uh, I can feel good about it. We study the job, find the best person to do the job. We identify, we think about what's going on in the minds of employees and, uh, and how we can get them interested in work. And then we develop management strategies to influence them to do what we need to accomplish as an organization. So that's all good stuff. Also, uh, in this era, uh, we have Mary Parker, I guess it's Follet, uh, or Follet, I don't know. Uh, but she's going, now look at her, she's going, uh, management is order givers. They just give orders. They're bosses. They have a commanding style of management. Yes, it's a hierarchy. Management's up here, the employees are down here. Everybody knows that. And then we have the chain of command with the hierarchy, and it's often coercive. It's not fun. There's no respect. There's no us. It's management versus employees, little employees. And she comes along and says, this is not working. It's not what it could be. If you want to really be a great manager and get a lot of things done and make a lot of money, we need a different way. So you can see that she's attacking Weber, especially right here. Uh, and she wants to move towards employees taking over the processes. Trust them, train them, and trust them. They know the processes, probably better management at this point. And then management becomes the facilitators. Yeah, they could coach and they monitor a little bit, but they're more of a helper 
instead of a just delegate and command. They're a, a helper on the team. Two-way discussions. You can imagine that crusty old manager back in the day, you know, rah, 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 and there's no two-way communications. It's command. You do that, and we pay you this. You know. So two-way discussions. Once the employees are in charge of the processes, they know things that are going on, and we need a two-way conversation going on. We work together in harmony. When you think of that crusty old manager, that's not harmony. We're going to work in harmony. There's also a power distance. Management, employee, kind of moving towards this. Uh, we have leadership and relationships. Hey, that's what he's saying right here. We need leaders. We get followers. We get leaders. And we operate, the organization operates as a community. It has a community spirit. We're not equal, but we're closer to being equal. <clears throat> and we work together to get things done. So she's saying that this ain't getting it. This is the better way. So here, again, you can clearly see uh, it's humanistic, it's equality, uh, it's relationships, and things like that. It's not impersonal, it's very personal. So this is her contribution to uh, the history of management. And these are the two, two good ones that brought in the human side. Now, uh, in the other class, we covered uh, Theory X and Theory Y. For you that didn't have that class, you can, I'll, I'll provide you with the links for that. We also did the Hawthorne effect, where the, they tested uh, light levels and productivity, but it turned out to be uh, attention that the employees got. In my opinion, attention that the employees got that led the employees to care about what they were doing and to improve what they were doing. Uh, so. Uh, there we go. Uh, a brief little history on a section of management.